Oh, Jason here. All right, we got Colton's snowmobile. It's a Indy 500 uh, Polaris, about a 91 model. And we were having, the issue originally was it was running fine and all of a sudden it lost spark to one cylinder. And they couldn't get that to fire back up. So they wound up getting a new coil right here. And they, they rewired in this coil. Okay. Um, still no spark. Lost both spark to both of them. So then they thought, then they brought it kind of to me. They had the, the recoil off already. And they were working on getting to the uh, stator and the flywheel. So I made a video about Colton taking the flywheel off. We got a new stator. And we got it all put back together last night. And we still didn't have any spark. So, after doing a lot of research, um, I, I was failing to get this to run. And as you can see, I pretty much tore all the, the wiring apart and trying to figure out where the problem was, why we weren't getting spark. Well, through my research and stuff, I found out that this black wire coming out of the coil is basically your kill switch. If you ground this to the motor or ground it back to the stator, which is usually ran up to your switches in black and then back down to the uh, stator in, inside here under the flywheel, and it grounds out. So that basically kills your motor. I did find the wiring diagram out there and if you can see this style of stator has your electrical coils up here three of them and then your um, spark coil down here which spark is a separate circuit basically to the coil to the coil and I had this I disconnected basically all the electronics other than the coil and that's it and I still had no spark so then what I did out of desperation basically is I took the old coil and rewired it back in if we can see this here again it's got the black wire for your kill the white wire here is ground back to the stator then you got the two others red, black, and white, or brown, white, and those are your power. And as you can see, I just tapped them in line there, and then there's a connector here, a three-prong, I don't know if I can pull that apart, there's a three-prong connector here, anyways. So, I rewired that in, and I had spark. Um... So then I threw the plugs in. They're not even tight yet. I just kind of threw them in quick. <clears throat> Got her to pull over and she popped off and fired right up. So basically this new coil, and I also noticed, I don't know if you can see that. See how that's really weather checked there? I'm not sure if that, you know, it shouldn't matter at all, but for some reason that coil's not working. Maybe I gotta figure out how to test it. Um, but anyways, we got it fired up. We still got to put it all back together. I'm waiting for Colton to give a hand with that. We got all this wiring put back in. I know that the switch here is dead, you know, so that doesn't really work because I've ohmed it out and checked it. So that, that really doesn't work. Um, so yeah, it's a, an interesting thing. Now these stators are a little different than the newer ones with the... ECM and things like that, you know, computers on board. This is basically the old one right here. As you can see, this is our electrical generation for like your lights, your tail, you know, your tail lights, your hand warmers, things like that. And then this is our pickup coil, which is what we have to time also when this is on here. Let's see if I can get this right. This gets mounted on here, and then these slots can rotate this plate in there 
to change our timing. Yes, I did break that. So basically what I'm saying though is this white wire is grounded to the motor which runs up to this three plug connector. So white's ground and then red red and black and brown and white come off the pickup coil. So I'm not even sure that this coil was or this stator was bad to begin with if the coil was bad but process of elimination they tried and put a new coil in we assumed that was working right um, so that's why we moved on to the coil and then when I did test this um, it did ground out which you know I didn't know better so it does have a direct ground this one here straight down to the white wire as you can see this brown is the other ground Remember that black wire off the coil I was talking about? Basically what your switching is doing is running the black wire to the ground or to the brown wire and then back to ground. And that's what kills your motor. If you see by the electrical schematic, you can trace that black wire right here. Ah, that don't work. Right here. That's the black wire coming off which then goes up to your stop button switch, then to your switch here, then back feeds into your brown wire that feeds back down into the uh, stator plate. So as long as this black wire is not being grounded out, if I'm correct, then this motor should start. So that's basically what I found. I'll keep you posted as we get this thing put back together, but hopefully this week we're supposed to be working on it to get it put back together and get it out in the snow. We'll see if we can get lights and all that generation figured out and we don't have any ground problems or issues like that. So this is basically two separate systems is what I'm trying to get at. This is particularly uh, uh, for the lights, generating that power for the lights and stuff. And this is a separate one. Newer stators just generate electricity and then the computer will take care of the spark ignition. And the timing and all that is through now a computer instead of the old style. Again, here's a picture of the wiring schematic. Alright, we'll keep you posted.